Hi everyone, our team from Tapufa would like to present on SARS-CoV-2 drug discovery using genetic algorithm and deep learning. So first of all, our team would like to thank all the parties from Foxwell and also our mentors in helping us completing this project. It's recommended that you have some basic understanding on how SARS-CoV-2 uh, COVID virus work. In case you don't have, have a look on this video. A lot of countries have been trying to find drugs that can stop the virus spread. A few approaches have been made to assist bioinformatic engineers and doctors in finding the right drugs. One of the approaches is using data-driven approach. According to the Drug Bank White Paper, a few drugs has been experimental with COVID-19 virus. The popular ones are Remdesivir, Propinavir, Ritonavir, and Chloroquine. The table below shows the respective binding score. Our objective is to find existing on new drug which has log P lower than 5 which is safe for oral administrations and binding score lower than negative 7.4. Why is negative 7.4? It's because Remdesivir has a binding score of negative 7.4. We use Crips DM as our guideline in how to improve this project. We focus on data preparations and data understanding instead of modeling. The original author introduced the use of global genetic algorithm and LSTM recurrent neural networks to generate new drugs. We can see that the author used the concept of mutations and generation-based evolutions. But the problem is the author didn't introduce or take account that the drug generated should have the log P should have log P lower than 5, which is suitable for oral administration. So in our architecture, we introduce a concept of local GA with the fitness functions of log P. Basically, by using crossover and mutation process, the local mutations and the global mutations is in the different concepts. And the local GA is used to find out molecules that contains log P between 1.35 to 1.8. Besides that, we also select molecules that have log P between 0 to 2 with respect to their score. So the log P adjusted score is calculated by the formula 2 over log P power of 0 0.33 times score. Alright, so now we'll be compared between original architecture and our newly created architecture. So in generation 0, we start by training an LSTM neural networks, recurrent neural networks, by using Sham BL database with around 400k of data. After that, we generate 10,000 of smiles by using LSTM neural networks. From the generated 10,000 smiles, we again filter up 1,000 smiles with the lowest similarities. After that, we append drugs such as Remdesivir, Ropinavir, or Ritonavir that have been showing that it's have a good binding score with COVID-19. So we append the drugs to here, to this mount, and so it will be more than 1000 now. So next we are doing the docking process using PyRx. After that, we export the CSV file. In original order, for next one to generation N, it will be start by getting 30, 35 molecule based on the best score. So this 35 molecule is getting from the result here. So the score is binding score, so they get from here 35 based on the binding score. So we get 5 based on their similarity, and then get 5 based on the weight, and get 5 based on the random mutations. After we select all here, we remove all the invalid smiles. Let's say we still have any invalid smiles, so we need to fill it out. And then we're doing transfer learning or fine tuning here to fine tune our, our transfer learning here to fine tune the result. So the data here will be used to fine tune this our LSTM neural networks. So again, if we, gen we use the neural networks to generate 5,000 smiles using LSTM. After that, we combine the results. Hold the whole result from generation 0 and generation 1 or generation n we combine together so here we combine the result and then again we're doing the docking process um of the these five thousands we're doing the docking and then we record the result so the process is repeated until the generations is stopped so this is the original author architecture while well, in our architecture we start by getting 35 um, based on the score and get 10 based on the similarity get 10 based on the log p so we hear the log p here is log p adjusted score which we have seen from the previous slide that's the formula is 2 over log p power of 0 0.33 times score so this is our log p so um, we get 5 based on the weight and get 5 based on the random mutations after that we pass to the ga process here the GA process. We I won't be explaining. We will be explaining this in uh, several minutes. Okay. So we get uh we process we pass all all the data to here the GA process. But remember that from here, this this value the 35, 10, and 10, and 5 and 5 is just a rule of thumb. So we don't have any reference. We just do based on a proportion since we want we want we put 35 because at generations 1 to 10, we want to focus on getting molecule that can achieve high score towards COVID-19. 
in the later generations 11, um, 11, 12 and more, we will be adjusting here by using, uh, by setting that um, log P, log P has the most molecule. So everything they generate should be follow log P. So in, we are kind of fine tuning the, uh, select, we are kind of selecting the best choice of, um, the molecule here. So after that, we, similar to the original, we remove the invalid smile, we train, we doing, uh, transfer learning, and we generate 5000. Since we have the concept of log P, at our data set, so now our LSTM networks will consider will take account that log p, log p as one of the uh, features that they should be consider when generate the molecule. So after that, they we combine a result and we do the docking process. So the process is repeated from one to ten uh, to generation n. As for our local GA process, we start by obtaining three hundred small randomly. These are basically our populations. And then we will select this 300, um, we will have 300 smiles randomly, we obtain here. And then we doing crossover and undergo mutations. After we finish the crossover, we undergo some mutations until we get number of, uh, let's say 50. This is to be number of 50. And then we get number of 50, 50 molecule that have log P between 1.35 to 1.8. So after that, we will return the smarts here. So this is basically our GA process. While in our generation N, we will start by getting 35 based on score, 10 based on similarity, 10 based on log P, 5 based on weight, 5 based on random mutations, and then we pass to the GA process. So this GA process basically is um, to create another 10 data that is in the, in the range of 1.35 to 1.8 in log P. So how we choose this data, basically we choose the, this data based on the row of thumb. We don't have any specific reference, so that's why in generation 1 to 10, we want to focus on getting lower score. Lower, uh, lower score means high, uh, means, uh, means this lo lower score means it can bind with the coronavirus well. So in the generation 11 above, we want to focus on getting a good log P. So that's why we we tune the proportion of the the data here: fifty five for the score, sixty five for the log p, and ten for the weight. So we tune here. After that, we will remove all the invalid smarts and we train our STM for current generations. Then after after we train, after we do the tra transfer learning here, we use the model to generate another five thousand smarts. And then we pass to the GA process. These 5000 smiles will act as a popu um, populations. So from these populations, 5000, we will choose another 50 as our mating pool or our output, output molecule. So this output molecule will be added together with our SDM network. And then we combine and then we do the docking process. This process is repeated from generation 1 to generation N. As for our GA process, we will start by obtaining n random molecule from mating pool. As example, from here is 50. So we get uh, n ram random of mating pool to population, let's say 50. And then we need to cross, we do crossover and mutations in order to fill out the mating pool. If the mating pool is filled out, we check is the log P is in the within 1.35 to 1.8. If yes, then we quit the loop. If no, then we will keep on keep on moving to the next generation and gen next generation and next generations. So at the end, it will return 50 smiles. So this 50 smiles is basically follow the mating pool. So a brief introduction to the docking process is that we first import the 6LU7, which is the coronavirus main protease and the ligands, which is our drugs into PyRx. We then minimize and convert the ligands into PDBQT format. So the minimization is there to obtain the least energy format of the molecules itself. And then we maximize the search space and start the protein docking simulation. And in the end, the results were exported into a CSV file and passed to the local GA. So the problem is this. During docking, 
we realized that in order to properly dock, we have long compute times because the protein docking software was found CPU only, therefore high-level parallel computing was impossible for us to achieve. And number two is that PyRx is unstable. So during our compute process, PyRx crashed a lot. So the problem is with this is that we need to reprocess the whole batch of the molecules. So we realized that this was getting not feasible at all. And the third is that docking requires high compute power. Combined with PyRx being unstable, this made uh, the processing of one generation up to 10 hours. So the solution to problems encountered during docking first is to counter the long compute times, we shard the input data into multiple parts and then we allocate into uh, we allocate for different group members. So one group members would take probably two parts, then maybe one would take one part and so on. So they run on their own computer separately, and this also enables us to counter pi eyes being unstable because when we shard the input data, we actually start a process for every single molecule. So in case one crashes, we just discard that molecule and we can continue doing what we are doing. So because docking requires high compute power, we provision a compute server on the cloud in order to help us dock quickly. Now, now I would like to talk about evaluation and results. After 12 generations of running the algorithm, we are proud to say that uh, we, we have come up with at least 23 uh, molecules that have good log P values as well as a very good binding affinity around negative 12 point something to negative 13 point 6. Um, this is the violin plot. Uh, we can see that uh, from Gen 1 to Gen 10, most of them will not get past negative 13. However, when we start, when we change the data proposition at Gen 11, then the maxim, the best result we can get is negative 13.5 and negative 14. Uh, this is the graph of a uh, score against generation, and from what we can see, we can we can see a constant declining, generally a declining trend, and gen start from generation ten, it declined at a uh, even sharper rate. The orange line is the is edible, which is which we define as having a log p value of less than five, and the blue has a log p value of more than five. From the both of the regression line, we can see that uh. The line is still is still uh decreasing at at a constant rate. So uh we assume that if we are allowed to run more generation, we will be getting even better results. So these are some generated molecules from our top twenty uh top twenty three uh very good molecules. So three of them are from uh LT from Matt's LTSM. And the one that is on the lower right corner, which have a very unique um, shape compared to other three, is the one that is generated from our GA. Further, further improvements in the future can also include uh, increased number of generations, change the local GA parameters so that it will be wider, uh, change the base network, which is our uh, MATS LSTM network, to gen generative adversarial network that we built from our own. We try to do it, but we don't have enough time to do to complete it. And as well as, if computationally possible, we want to compute all the binding binding of TD for all the drugs in the market and use that as a generation zero, and start training from that. And then also, uh, we would like to explore further tools that that is GPU based for even faster evaluation. All right, that's all for my for our group. Thank you very much.